Hi everyone, I'm Swishi Patro, and I'll be talking about quantum fine grained complexity. It's a joint work with uh, Harry Booman, Bruno Loff, and Florian Spellman. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, feel free, uh, free to interrupt me during the talk. And I think there's also going to be some time after the talk as well for some questions. So, okay, let me begin. Um, So off late, a lot of money is going into quantum computing because for many computational problems, we have quantum algorithms that are faster than the classical counterparts. And uh, rightfully so, because quantum computers are a more powerful model of computation than the classical computers. But the quantum speed up that we see for all problems is not guaranteed. Let me like give you some examples. Say for problems like integer factorization and discrete log, we have quantum algorithms that are exponentially faster than the classical ones. But for problems like triangle finding, tree sum, orthogonal vectors, the quantum algorithms that we currently have are just quadratically faster. And uh, for problems like longest common subsequence, edit distance, we don't even know of any quantum speed up yet. So it, it it would be nice if in, a, if, if in some way we are able to know for which kind of problems we have a quantum speed up. And if at all we do have some quantum speed up, then by how much? And uh, the state of the art is not too bad. Like for some problems like an ordered search, we know that the quantum speed up is optimal. But again, for problems like traveling salesperson problem or CNFSAT or some examples that we saw in the previous slide, the speed up is not known to be optimal. And for in some other case, like in case of this recommendation algorithms, we thought we had a exponential quantum speed up, but it turned out that we did not. So again, the natural question is how much quantum speed up is possible and how do we assert that? And unfortunately, another negative result, a recent result by Babush et al showed that with the current um, quantum error correcting techniques, there is no quantum advantage for problems having only quadratic quantum speedups for any practical input sizes. So this makes it even more important for us to assert what kind of problems have speedups. And if the speedup is at most quadratic, then probably this is not a good idea to invest in quantum computing for those problems at least. But how do we assert that there are you know, the best possible quantum speed up for certain problems is say at best quadratic. And we will see that we can do it by proving something called lower bounds, okay? And uh, for example, what we will be seeing in this talk is, uh, we do not know of any quantum algorithms for edit distance and longest common subsequence, which are better than the classical ones. And in the case of these computational geometry problems, we have quantum algorithms that are quadratically faster, thanks to Ambini's and Larka's uh, result in 2020. And using our techniques, what we show is this, the, the speed ups that we have for these computational geometry problem could be the best. And uh, it's very likely that the, uh, there is no uh, quantum speed up prob uh, you know, possible for edit distance and longest common subsequence as well. And we use the, like we prove these results by using a technique called fine grain complexity. And also let me uh, point out that uh, this uh, technique of quantum fine grain complexity is not new to uh, our paper alone or our papers alone. Uh, results similar to this have been given for um, closest pair and bichromatic closest pair by Aronson et al in 2020. Now, uh, let me begin the technical part of the talk. Uh, earlier in one of these slides, I used this term lower bound, and I'm going to use upper bounds and lower bounds pretty often in the rest of the talk. So let me just clarify for some people who are, might be working in, uh, you know, very different areas might not know this. Anyways, now upper bound for any problem is just the runtime of the best known algorithm that solves the problem. And lower bound, on the other hand, is the time required by any algorithm that solves the problem. And we say the bounds are tight, or we say the you know, best known algorithm is optimal when the upper bounds and lower bounds match. 
but unfortunately we do not know how to prove low bonds. So we resort to a technique called fine grain reduction and I will briefly explain what it is. Now suppose that you have a problem A which is very well studied, people have put a lot of effort in it and but people are not able to you know improve on the best uh, known almost trivial algorithm for problem A. And suppose we have another problem B, which is also a useful problem, but it's not as well studied as problem A. Now, can we comment on the hardness of problem B based on the knowledge that we have about problem A? We can, if we are able to reduce problem A to problem B. Now, what do I mean by reduction here? If there is a map that can map the input instance of problem A, into some input instances of problem B, then using the algorithm for problem B, we can solve problem A. Now, this is what I mean by a reduction. And how is that going to help us? Now, see, if there was a fast algorithm to solve problem B, then using that, we are able to give a fast algorithm pro for problem A, which we do not believe is possible. That means there shouldn't be a fast algorithm for problem B. So what we have done here is we have given a lower bound for problem B based on a lower bound that we believe exists for problem A. Let me summarize. So we pick a problem A, which is believed to be hard. We reduce problem A to problem B. And then we conclude the lower bound for problem B using a believed lower bound for problem A. And in this project, uh, we, we, we studied two central problems like that. For the first part, I'll be talking about problem A uh, being the satisfiability problem. And we concluded uh, conditional load bounds for edit distance and longest common subsequence problem based on the hardness of this satisfiability problem. Okay. Now, let me go into the detail. Now, let's again, uh, you know, recap what satisfiability problem is. Now, we have this Boolean formula on n input variables. And what we would like to know, if there is a satisfying assignment to these n variables, uh, sorry, if it is, if there's an assignment to these n variables that satisfies the formula. Let's look at an example. So we have this formula, x1, uh, you know, this Boolean formula. It is defined on three variables. And uh, uh, by setting this assignment as x1 equals to 0, x3 equals to 0, and x3 equals to 1, we see that the formula is not satisfied. But by changing this x3 to 0, we see that the formula is satisfied. So yeah, this formula has a satisfying assignment, which is x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 0, and x3 equals to 0. Now, when this formula is in this conjunctive normal form, that is, all these variables are connected with ors, and that forms a clause, and each of these clauses are connected with an and, then, and you know, the clauses are of arbitrary length. Basically, it means that it can take variables from x1 to xn, any number of variables. Then we call this problem as a CNF SAT problem. Now, what do we know about CNF SAT problem in the classical setting? We know that it is an NP complete problem. We know that the best known classical algorithm for arbitrary long clauses runs in two power n time. And the best known lower bound that we know sadly is only linear. So there's this huge gap that has not been bridged for this problem. So in 2001, Impagliazzo, Paturi and Zane conjectured that there is no faster than two power n classical algorithm to solve CNF sat on n variables. And they call this as the strong exponential time hypothesis and abbreviated as SETH. Now, this strong exponential time hypothesis, or I'll be calling it as SETH, became uh, instrumental in proving a lot of lower bounds. Like, for example, uh, maybe my screen is not visible. Yeah. So, specific exponential lower bounds were proven for many problems in NP. And lower bounds were also proven for problems outside of NP. For example, it was shown that condition on set, this strong simulation of quantum computational models will take exponential time classically. 
And this set also implied a lot of polynomial lower bounds for problems in P. And for the purpose of this talk, we are going to look at these kind of implications of set, where set implies these polynomial lower bounds for problems in P. Let me give an example of one of these starting reductions. So the first polynomial, uh, first reduction from the CNF set to a polynomial problem was given by Ryan Williams in 2005, where he reduced the CNF set problem to something called an orthogonal vectors problem and giving a quadratic lower bound based on condition on set. Now this orthogonal vectors problem be, became central problem in you know, uh, giving reductions to string comparison problems like edit distance and pressure distance and LCS, and also giving an n squared lower bound for the string comparison problems. Now the surprising, the nice part was, all this was tight. And this kind, so Seth became the reason, like Seth kind of gave the explanatory power as to why people were not able to find, you know, subquadratic algorithms for orthogonal vectors or string comparison problems. But, um, and also CNF set was also used to give, uh, red, uh, you know, get lower bounds for many dynamic problems, triangle collection, matching triangles. And this is the thing that I already talked about. But what about the quantum case? I'm a quantum person and I'm more interested in the quantum reductions and the quantum complexity of these problems. Now, remember set says that CNF set requires two power n time on a classical computer. Clearly set doesn't hold relative to quantum computation anymore. That is because using this Grover search algorithm and for people who are not familiar with Grover search, it is, a, it is, it is just a search algorithm, unstructured search algorithm. Say you have N items and you want to search for a particular item, then classically you can do that in N time, but quantumly using this Grover search algorithm, you can do it in root N time. So it is quadratic fast, faster than uh, classical algorithm to do the search, okay? And using the same Grover search algorithm over the CNF sat on n variables, we can actually solve this in two power n by two time. So we can do it quadratically faster. Therefore, all these set based lower bounds that we talked about, they don't hold in the quantum setting anymore because like set itself is not true anymore. So um, it was natural for us to then conjecture that, okay, we gave a basic quantum version of this set conjecture. We conjectured along with Aronson et al in 19 that there is no faster than two power n by two quantum algorithm to solve CNF sat on n variables. But then how useful is this basic Q set gonna be for us? Now let's look at this picture again. Uh, the thing that is hidden here is quantum setting. Yeah. Okay, so we have this picture, we are back to this picture. Now under basic QSET, the CNF sat is going to take two power n by two time. And we were able to quantize this reduction very easily. The classical reduction by Williams in 2005, we were able to quantize that very easily. And we were able to give a linear lower bound for orthogonal vectors. And then uh, the reduction by Backers and Deek and Bringman Kuhlman the, the reduction from orthogonal vectors to string comparison problems also had this easy local property. So we were able to quantize that also easily. And we were able to give a linear lower bound for string comparison problems based on this basic Q set. But the sad part is while for orthogonal vectors, it was tight and it was interesting, but for the, pro the, for the string comparison problems, the, there's a gap that basic Q set is not able to explain. Because the linear lower bound that we uh, the lower bound that we got was linear, and the current known upper bound for edit distance or LCS in the quantum setting is n square. So there's a gap that we were not able to explain because of basic use. So this motivated us to give us the Q set framework. So what we noticed is, like let's recall the CNF sat problem again once more. We have this CNF formula with n input variables. We want to know if there's an assignment that satisfies to this formula, right? And uh, so if I look at this from this truth table point of view, now I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm 
talking about the same problem i'm just changing like the uh, you know how to say um the representation of the problem now truth table of a formula is nothing but a 2 power n bit string which is the formula evaluated on every possible input of that formula so the, the string x is nothing but the formula evaluated on all these variables set to 0 and formula evaluated on you know just the last variable set to 1 and so on so this this because there are two part n assignments we have the string to be as long as two part n so now the cnf swap formula uh, pro, sorry problem is nothing but finding computing this or of this truth table right it is it is it is one of the same things and the quantum algorithm for cnf sat we know requires the uh, takes to power n by 2 twine, time and we also know that the query complexity of this or function on 2 power n bit strings is also 2 power n by 2 so this kind of gives us some intuition as to how hard this or and truth table could be but what if we are interested in some other property of the satisfying assignment but not the or of truth table because for in the quantum setting searching for an element in an un, uh, in a unordered uh, list has a quadratic advantage but maybe there are some other properties that don't have quadratic advantage what if we look at some property like that say for example we were interested we have a formula and we are interested whether there are odd number of satisfying assignments to this phi and not not just whether satisfying assignments exist or not. That we would call it as parity CNF set. And if I asked you how much time do you think it would take for us to compute parity CNF set quantumly, it because people uh, know that the query complexity of parity on all strings is like to power n, people think or it, it is natural to believe that CNF sat problem might not be amenable to Grover like speed ups, and it might take actually to power n time quantumly to solve parity CNF sat. Now, this kind of became our central idea to this QSET framework, where instead of just conjecturing about the hardness of searching for a satisfying assignment, we, are, we give the framework where we are able to establish a, like, you know, a conjecture, a framework of conjectures, where we Predicted the hardness of some other property on the satisfying assignments, not just, uh, you know, whether or not a satisfying assignment exists, or parity, or some other property. And things like similar to that exist in the classical setting as well. Okay, this is just a side note. And using this kind of a technique, we were able to give quantum time lower bound for edit distance. And how we do that is uh, we study this classical reduction from satisfiability to edit distance in LCS by uh, Abod et al, a result given in 2015. And um, then we were able to quantize this reduction easily. And using basic QSET, uh, like I had told you earlier, we were give, able to give a linear lower bound for this problem. But what we noticed was this reductions encode actually more than just existence of a satisfying assignments, a property that is harder than existence, but was easier than parity or maturity. And uh, we using query complexity techniques, like you know, uh, low, uh, techniques to prove query lower bounds, we were able to establish the hardness of this property. And using our framework, then, we were able to plug in that and we were able to give a n power 1.5 time lower bound for edit distance in LCS based on QSET. And uh, so the, as first applications of QSET, we were able to give these non-trivial n power 1.5 quantum time lower bound for edit distance and LCS, tight linear lower bound for orthogonal vectors problem, which was also given by this uh, paper by Aronson et al in 2020. And we were also able to show that uh, using our framework, that this classical lower bound for scheme of proofs of useful work by Ball, Rosen, Sabin, and Vasudevan also holds in the quantum setting as well. Okay. And uh, but there are some other reductions from CNF sat to 
classical reductions, I mean, which exist, which are still yet to be explored. And for other string comparison problems like pressure distance and DT, uh, uh, this dynamic uh, time warping, we believe our reductions will hold for them as well, but uh, this is a low hanging fruit that we are yet to explore. Now, going to the next part of our uh, project that we studied. Now in this part, we again studied fine grained reductions, but this time the central problem was not CNF sat problem, it was something else called three sum problem. And uh, the, so we, we conjecture the hardness of three sum problem in the quantum setting. And then conjectured on that, uh, like conditional on that conjecture, we were able to give lower bounds for computational geometry problems, a lot of them, and zero edge weight triangle finding problem. I will uh, go into the details now. Now, three sum problem, is a very simple problem to describe and very interesting. So what we have here, we have a list of n integers and what we would like to know if this list contains three elements, A, B, C, it could be like, you know, repeated as well, such that A plus B plus C equals to zero. Now let's look at this example. We have say, we, can, we have the positive instance of three sum here by taking a equals to one, b equals to four, and c equals to minus five, uh, we know that they all sum up to zero. Now, what is the complexity of this three sum problem in the classical setting? So there is a trivial n cube algorithm, right? Because what you could do is you have this triples, you have n cube of them, you just go over all these triples and you find out if any of these uh, triples add up to zero. But there's a slightly less trivial n square algorithm as well. And I will discuss that. So take this copy of this list, make a copy. Now make another copy. Now make a third copy, but now sort the list. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go over all these n square pairs from the first two list and see if some of these pairs is present in this third list with a negative sign. So all we are doing is we are taking some of like, you know, some of each of these pairs, and then we are searching if any of these sum is present in my last list with a negative sign. And for checking that I can use binary search because I've already sorted the list. So with this n squared log n time, I'm able to actually solve three sum. Now there's another trick which even gets rid of this log n factor giving a n square algorithm. And that I will not be discussing in this talk. So just believe me on that. Now the weird part was people are not able to improve on these, on this n square classical algorithm for threesome. And like with a lot of effort and time went into it, people ended up conjecturing that threesome requires n square time on a classical computer. And they called it as the classical threesome conjecture. Now this threesome conjecture became instrumental in proving lower bounds for a lot of other problems, which for which people are not able to improve on the already known algorithms. And again, we would like to, oh, before I go there, I would like to kind of show, a, like we, I will zoom in a bit towards this reduction from threesome to zero edge weight triangle finding problem to kind of give you a flavor as to how these reductions look like, okay? So let's go into that. So we have this threesome problem, which I've already defined. And now we have this another problem, interesting in graph theory, which is called zero edge weight triangle finding problem, which is very simple. We have this graph, we have this uh, uh, edges with weights associated with it. Now we want to know if there exists a triangle such that the sum of each of these weights of the triangle adds up to zero. That is the problem. Okay. Now, uh, so what would this reduction imply? So if there was a n cube, uh, subcubic algorithm for zero edge weight triangle finding problem, then three sum could have a subquadratic algorithm. But given that we believe three sum doesn't have a subquadratic algorithm, this concludes that zero edge weight triangle finding problem also shouldn't have a subcubic algorithm in the classical setting. 
And the reduction was particularly interesting because what they did was, the, oh yeah, this reduction was given by uh, Williams et al. Um, I, I forgot the other author's name. And they reduced threesome to a sorted version of threesome, okay? They just took this input of threesome and they like, you know, reordered it and rewrote the input and they gave a linear time reduction from threesome to sorted threesome. Oh, another thing I should uh, bring to your notice, for the purpose of uh, this project, we ignore any polylogarithmic or logarithmic improvements on N. So those are the factors that we don't care about. So uh, when I say linear time, it could be that it has a logarithmic factor, but I don't care about, okay? And which was like almost like straightforward classical sorting. And then they gave a non-trivial classical reduction from the sorted threesome to this zero edge weight triangle finding problem. Again, I'm quantum. So I would like to know the quantum complexity of these problems. Now, what happens to threesome in the quantum setting? This classical algorithm that I discussed, the almost n square algorithm, we can actually speed up using Grover search algorithm. How do we do? We, we take this list for the first time we sort it. And then for the, for like, we don't make copies of this anymore, but we just use Grover search over all these n square tuple to, to see if there is an element that sums up to this, any of these pairs with a negative sign. And that we can do using n log n because we have this Grover speed up over n square, which is n. And then it was natural for us to conjecture, okay, threesome requires n square, class, uh, like this was already known, the classical conjecture. We conjectured in the quantum setting that threesome requires n time on a quantum computer. A similar conjecture was also given in a paper by Ambayanis and Larka but they informally uh, mentioned the conjecture. Now, what happens to these uh, classical reductions from threesome? Uh, because now that the complexity of threesome in the quantum setting is quadratically faster, some of these reductions might not even go through. So let's again zoom into this problem and let's see what happens to the Class, a quantum reduction from three sum to zero edge weight triangle finding problem. Now, what we noticed was while this three sum to sorted three sum reduction in the classical setting was very simple and very uh, trivial, the reduction from three sum to sorted three sum in the quantum setting was not at all trivial. And, but surprisingly, the non trivial reduction from sorted three sum to zero edge weight triangle finding problem was easily quantizable and we were able to give a nice quantum reduction from this to this. So we still had this question mark to fill. Well, someone could even argue that, yeah, maybe you could have tried to give a new reduction from three sum to uh, zero edge find trying the problem, but we thought, okay, let's see if we can fix this question mark here. And in fact, we do. And Another interesting thing was not for this three, it's not just that for three sum to zero edge weight triangle finding, we had this blockhead, but even for reductions from three sum to this computational geometry problems, we had similar blockhead where three sum was reduced to some sorted version of three sum. And then it was a like, you know, easy quantization of these uh, classical reduction. So it was not only for this problem that we needed to understand the hardness of sorted threesome in the quantum setting, but even to understand the hardness of these problems, we needed that. And we dove into it. So we like to summarize, most of these reductions from threesome required sorting as an intermediate step for which we do not know if there's a quantum speed up. Actually, we know that there is no quantum speed up for that. So the classical reductions cannot be directly ported into the quantum setting. So we give a workaround we use this quantum walk algorithm to show that the sorted versions of threesome also are as hard as the original threesome in the quantum setting. Now, let me give you a flavor of that. Uh, also, before I get into it, a tiny disclaimer. Now, this part of the talk, the walk part of the talk is gonna be difficult for people who have not seen uh, quantum walk before. 
okay but i'm i'm still going to try uh, and see uh, if i can do any justice to that okay so the uh, like let's look at this quantum uh, walk based query algorithm for the three sum problem so we have this something called johnson graph now johnson graph is uh, nothing but um, okay it's parameterized by n and r where uh, this every node is a r size subset of this set n okay so this node contains so this node will now contain r size subset of the input to three sum because the inputs are indexed by three sum and we store those query values as well okay now oh sorry so nodes contain the solution ha huh, yeah now nodes that contain the solution to three sum problem are marked now remember that we have this each of these node is going to contain a r size subset of the input to three sum so if there is a solution to three sum a positive solution to three sum then it is bound to be present in a lot of nodes okay so those nodes are going to be marked now what this quantum walk algorithm is going to do is it is going to find this marked node in optimal number of queries yeah please note right now i'm discussing the query algorithm okay now the complexity of the walk algorithm turns out to be something of this uh, nice form where s to s is the setup cost n and r are uh, related like this c is a checking cost and u is an update cost now what do i mean by setup cost so oh, sorry now setup cost is the amount of queries it requires to get all, all these query values of this input so if i say say there is a r size subset that vertex v5 indicates then at some point we would like to query the input for, from that oracle so setup cost will be the amount of time taken to query these now checking cost is to check whether any node is marked node or not so in this setting it will be like oh is uh, does this uh, query values of v5 does it contain a solution to three sum yes or no that would be the checking like the amount of queries required to do that would be the checking cost now the update cost is oh i also forgot to tell you that the johnson graph the nodes are connected with each other only when uh, there exists an edge between the two nodes only when it differs in one index so the walk algorithm is going to go from one node to another node and that would mean that it is updating this this uh, node from this node to that node so it is going to remove one element and add another element so the update cost is going to be how many queries it is required to remove one element and add another element and it turns out that by there is an algorithm which finds this marked elements with s like with s set to r checking cost set to 0 and update cost just set to 2 but the problem with this is this algorithm is not time time efficient while this query algorithm turned out to be a sublinear query algorithm it was n power 3 by 4 and it was also time but it is not a sublinear time algorithm and the reason being we do not know of a method of checking whether a solution to three sum exists in any node with like uh, in less than r amount of time now this messes up with the whole calculation so the idea that we thought about is what if we were able to store these r size subsets in such a way that this checking cost for us is reduced okay and we see that we can do that but with a tiny trick so we use these dynamic data structures to maintain these query values in ascending order and because they are dynamic data structures and uh, they have this and such data structures we see that exist which has polylogarithmic cost of insertion and deletion and indexing we were able to use such data structures and now because we are able to maintain this sorted order uh, thing very very efficiently instead of invoking you know check 
the checking algorithm instead of invoking that, okay, check for a threesome solution. Now we can use the algorithm that checks for threesome solutions in a sorted list. And for all we know, maybe, you know, sorted threesome is easier for a quantum computer than, you know, a normal threesome. We don't know. So now we will see what happens. Now, what we noticed is if sorted threesome is easier than normal threesome, and if there exists a sublinear quantum time algorithm to solve sorted threesome, then by plugging in these values again in this equation, by setting this R into like some nice uh, n bar beta, we saw that this whole equation can be actually made sublinear. So what that implied was a sublinear algorithm for sorted threesome implies a sublinear algorithm for original threesome, which is not possible under this quantum threesome conjecture. So that became the crux for our uh, reduction. And we were actually able to use the same techniques to show that, you know, not just normal sorted threesome, but there are some other orderings or, you know, uh, like structuring of input that also is as hard as the original threesome. And so using that, we were able to quantize all these classical reductions from threesome to these computational geometry problems and threesome to the zero edge weight triangle finding problem. And it turned out that for this problem, the lower bound matches with the current upper bound. And for a lot of these problems, the uh, bounds again match. And uh, so to completely summarize, what we have done in this project is we took these two uh, central problems in classical complexity theory, which is called threesome and CNF-SAT. We studied their classical reductions. We studied the conjectures, the hardness of these uh, problems in the classical setting. We gave quantum analogs of this, these conjectures. Then we gave quantum quantized version of many of these reductions from threesome to these problems and CNF-SAT to these problems. And uh, as a result, and also oh, another uh, summary is, like for this reduction from threesome to this vast collection of computational problems, we were actually able to give lower bounds for this entire list. Okay. And uh, the future directions are again numerous because what we have now is a lot of these other classical reductions that are not explored in the quantum setting. And we believe our framework in this CNF-SAT uh, scenario or this uh, uh, proof strategy that we give in the threesome scenario, we believe that those can be very useful in proving reduction, uh, concluding some reductions in the open problems as well. And the problems here, that is this pressure distance and DTW, these are the low hanging fruits of the string comparison problems, which we uh, believe can be directly plugged into our framework and we can get lower bounds for these problems. And the other future direction is, if you remember, I told uh, for most of these computational geometry problems, we have tight lower bounds. That means for some we don't. So there are ab uh, about four of these problems that are still open for which we do not uh, have tight bounds. So it's possible that they are really hard in the quantum setting and we have to come up with better lower bound techniques or maybe there are some tricks that we we should use and to speed up the current algorithms. And uh, finally, we also believe this, uh, like though fine grain complexity is explored in the classical setting very, very, very well, uh, it is a fresh direction in the quantum setting. And there are other key problems, like you know how we use the CNF sat here and threesome here. There are other problems in this area, central problems from which the reductions are not being studied yet. And uh, like we believe that is also an important direction to look at. And uh, yeah, I am right on time. And this is the end of my talk. Thank you for the attention and thank you for the invite to speak at IATIF.